that, JT. Well, our Masters of Spin this morning, how the government tried to spin its way through this week's Women's March for Justice. It should have come as no surprise that thousands of women descended on Canberra looking for a political response at the treatment of women. But rather than being greeted by the Prime Minister or the Minister for Women, Scott Morrison urged his MPs to sell the government's record and he then went and said this in Parliament. This is a triumph of democracy. Not far from here, such marches, even now, are being met with bullets. But not here in this country, Mr Speaker. Not here in this country. Wow, our Masters of Spin this morning are advertising and marketing experts Adam Ferrier and Matthew Bywater. Welcome to you both. Adam, the, go the government was desperate not to look weak on this issue, but from a crisis management perspective, really, it, it, it was pretty extraordinary stuff, wasn't it? I must admit, when I heard the, the Prime Minister say that, I said, what did he say? I get the point he was making about democracy, but it did appear to be tone deaf. Uh, yeah, tone deaf in the extreme. It was only eight years ago that Tony Abbott appointed himself as Minister for Women when he was Prime Minister. So the bar of white male Prime Ministers in this country understanding uh, women, women's rights and equality is pretty bloody low. Um, and, I, and also Scott Morrison has learnt his behaviours in that Canberra bubble. So he's kind of just doing the best he can. He's not trying to say ridiculous things or be a jerk. It's just that that is the kind of environment and the bubble that he's learning how to operate in. And it's just he's extraordinarily out of touch. The issue for him is this is not a fringe issue. 51% uh, of the population is women and he's got to get it right. Yeah, the optics of it weren't good. Matthew, if the government didn't have an image problem before the march, how does it look now, especially when its own Minister for Women was caught trying to avoid speaking to the media this week? Yeah, it's, it's very awkward in one forum and the way they've handled it has not been great. Uh, a question I have is, so we're talking about should have they had met beforehand with, with the march, the marches beforehand or behind closed doors or should they go on the march? I think why not both? Mm. Why, why couldn't the actual marches, why couldn't uh, they actually meet with the Prime Minister? I mean, this is the Prime Minister of the country, after all, and have a talk, have the talks, educate him if you think you need to educate him, but have those talks first and then encourage him to come along as a partner in the march. It, sm it smells a little politics when you decide Side, no, I'm not going to talk to the Prime Minister behind closed doors. That, that was interesting, wasn't it, Adam? Just that the decision... I, I can understand from the marchers' point of view that they were saying that we want him to come out yeah. and actually feel what it was like here. And having spoken to lots of people who were at these marches, apparently the feeling was absolutely palpable. It was, it was visceral out there. And they were saying that is just not going to be communicated. Yeah. Adam, you know, that it, was, it, it, it was an odd decision. I thought. Yeah, I thought it was an odd decision as well. And perhaps those in politics know the reason why he wouldn't come out to the march, yet he would meet them in closed doors. Uh, I'm not in politics, and I do not understand that decision. As a general member of the public, it's extraordinarily, it feels extraordinarily silly to do that, to not do that. It was interesting listening to Liberal MP uh, Russell Broadbent, who is has been serving in the Parliament for one of the longest times, and, and he went to the march and yes. he said he believes that there should be a summit, and he's, he's coming mm. from the coalition side, so a, a female summit, a women's summit, to actually get all of these issues out on the table, perhaps that will you know make the government yeah. listen. All right, moving on now, and sportswear company Nike is no stranger to tackling women's issues. It's done it again by celebrating exercise and pregnancy featuring elite female athletes. Can you be an athlete? You, pregnant. You, a mother. That depends. Now, Matthew, positive images of pregnant women, but Nike also has had its form on the treatment of pregnant women in the past. A six-time Olympic gold medalist has spoken out after claiming the company tried to cut her payments once she became a mother, which are extraordinary claims. Should Nike have gone ahead with this campaign, uh, surely knowing that they were going to be called out on this issue? Yeah, no, I like the fact that I have gone ahead of it because they actually have fixed that problem. They now have a pregnancy policy in place because of that issue. So it's one of those situations where a company should be big enough to say, yeah, we, we got it wrong, we screwed up and we fix it. And this is an important thing, not just for these particular athletes uh, who get the Nike endorsements. In fact, this athlete, athlete has gone on to get another endorsement. But for women in general, that we take, we take notice of the fact that these periods of pregnancy have huge impacts on their careers mm. and their total earnings for life. So this is something 
think this is a bigger issue than just Nike and, and uh, athletic sponsorship. Yeah, I just thought this ad was amazing. Absolutely mm. amazing. Watched it several times. All right, now yeah. finally, Adam, the government ad that looks nothing like a government ad, the New South Wales Environment Protection Agency, is giving us rage against the polystyrene. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, uh, if, the, if the aim here is to, 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 yeah. to change people's behaviour, uh, does it work? Um, probably. And I, I really like this. I like its simplicity. Just get it stuck in kids' heads especially. Don't be a tosser. It's kind of funny. I like the brutal simplicity of this. The graphics are kind of cool. It would have been done on a sho shoestring. If some kid's walking along and he's deciding to throw his thing or not and he hears the song in his head and it just reminds him them, or her head, then maybe it'll stop people from littering a bit. So, you know, good luck to them and, and well done. I think a lot of kids have got the message already. It's probably the adults that need to hear it. Well, that's true. pretty amazing. No, kids true. are the ones yeah. that actually will tell people. Like, my yeah. kids told someone recently, you just dropped something, you know. Oh. Mm, that, that went like, down really yeah, well with them as well. And any sort of play on words with Rage Against the Machine yeah. is good by me. Rage Against <laughs> Polystyrene, that's awesome. Matt Bywater and Adam Ferrier, great to talk to you both as always. Thank you. See you guys.